What do y'all? This your girl Star J Craziness, and I'm coming to you, 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 and you with another Word on the Street segment. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. So y'all, Peter Thomas, aka Patricia, <laughs> had to go to trial today, or it was yesterday? I think I think it was yesterday to clear his name, y'all. To clear his name. So this is what the brother had to say. Hey, people. I just walked out of the courthouse where this whole thing, this mess that's on down. It's all over the blocks, right? So I just walked out of the courthouse. And the verdict came back 12 out of 12 jewelry. Not guilty. Keep on coming for me, but I tell them that I'm protected. Okay? They're trying to come for me in all kinds of ways, but I'm protected. Alright? I know what it is. Now when I don't talk to y'all, because I think y'all on some BS, don't take it personal. Because it's stuff like this. It's stuff like this that makes me stronger. Okay. I'm protected. Have a good day. So y'all heard him. The brother is not guilty. But let's just take a deep dive into what transpired to even get to this point. Okay. So it says Peter Thomas is standing trial this week in Baltimore Circuit Court on allegations that he drunkenly a woman. On Tuesday, Chanel Williams testified that she decided to go to Bar 1 on Lancaster Street near South Central Avenue in Harbor East with two friends after dinner the night of March 20th of last year because it had been a while since she visited the bar. We were all having a good time. Everything was fine. Then she said a woman invited the group to a booth in the VIP area. That's when Thomas came over and gave her a hug. He pushed her back into the lounge chair with his body weight. She testified and she figured that he'd been drinking. Later, Thomas came back to the booth, she said, and started cussing her out for no apparent reason. He then put a hand on her and squeezed for about 30 seconds. Oh, my Lord. Williams testified that she left the restaurant and drove home. She said she called 911 that night and filed charges the following afternoon with a court commissioner. Her friend Sierra told the jury that she had been talking and dancing with Thomas and joked that Williams was upset with him. That's because he had blocked Sierra's phone number. What the hell? I didn't know that was going to hit a trigger point, noting that she had made up that Williams was upset. Why are we even playing these childish games? On cross-examination, Sierra testified that she was talking to Thomas and went to dinner with him. They were intimate one time. She said he also sent her $2,500. Mm -hmm. When it comes to being sexual and have money involved, everything just go all right. In her closing arguments, the assistant state's attorney, Ashley, told the jury to focus on what happened that night in the restaurant and not other information, including the details of past relationships. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is an assault case. Thomas, she said, engaged in downright irresponsible behavior, conduct that amounted to second degree assault. Meanwhile, Thomas' attorney described his client as a hardworking man who built a business in Harbor East, which he called the Jewel of Baltimore. Brown asked the jury to look at the version of events that the state outlined in court with a critical lens. He said it made no sense that his client would attack customers. I can't profess to know exactly what happened. I wasn't there. The burden is on them to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. He later added during his closing, arguments okay so our manager at bar one hannah testified that williams got in thomas face marquise said he was sitting in the booth that night and heard a commotion but did not make anything of it thomas 
testified that he was at the restaurant the entire day and described his role as a promoter. He said he typically drinks three or four cocktails, but stated he was not intoxicated. Initially, Peter said he did not see the woman walk into the restaurant, but he later went over to greet them. Williams was different that night, he said, and asked him why he blocked her friend. She was hysterical. She was in my face. He said he did not put his hand around her neck, calling the allegations ridiculous. Instead, Thomas testified he eased her off. She fell back into the chill. Nowadays, he said everyone has a camera on their cell phone. If the allegations were true, then I'd be on every blog if that happened. Well, technically, you are on every blog right now um of these allegations since the report was filed but like i said the jury they um gave a verdict of not guilty so he can go on about his you know merry way but of course patricia <laughs> aka peter goes on and stirs up more trouble <laughs> so tammy rivera the victim's aunt she came out and she talked about the situation. This is what she has to say. You know, a lot of people are asking me and DMing me about the situation with my niece. I haven't spoke about it or said anything because, you know, out of privacy for her and her respect. Um, but anybody who knows, they know I don't play when it comes to my family. Peter knows that as well. He, um, what the moral story is, my niece didn't want me to help her. She didn't want me involved. She didn't want me to help her with the, you know, the, the lawyer or the case or anything. What it boils down to is he had Warren Brown as a lawyer. My niece had a state's attorney. That's what happened. That's all it is. He put his hands on her. He her. She called me outside the, the restaurant crying hysterically. My niece is not loud. She's not ghetto. She does not be in no mess. That's not her world. For her to even call me like that and saying that someone and everybody who was in that club saw it. He called around that next morning multiple times trying to apologize and get in contact with her. Like, you did it. Apologize and move on. If it gets to a point where you can't control your liquor and you don't remember what happened and you have to call around and say, oh, my God, I don't remember what happened last night. What did I do? I don't remember that happening, that you're that drunk that you can't remember. That's sad. Get some help. Thank God that you had a little money to get you a good lawyer to get you off. But next time, it's not. it might not go that way. It might go a whole nother way. This ain't, um, you know, Miami. This ain't, you know, Charlotte. You in Baltimore. Get some help. Because it ain't going to be a next time. So thank God you won this case. You better say that, Tammy Rivera, for the one time, for the one time. If you can't remember... Or if you can't comprehend what's going on when you are under the influence, you don't need to be intaken in things like that, Mr. Patricia. So, of course, Peter had to, you know, say his woes about the situation. So let's listen, shall we? There's all kind of articles coming out right now, accusing me of all type of stuff. These people will write so many different things. Uh... Now that I'm hearing that I'm paying for that's crazy. I'm giving away money, that's crazy. Um, I find innocent, thank God. All 12 jurors came back with an innocent thing. Um, and now I gotta move on. And there you have it guys. Those were the details um, that I gathered up and Tammy responded. He responded on, you know, he's protected and the Lord is behind him and no evil shall prosper. Okay, against that man. But we all know he got skeletons in his closet. But anyway, y'all just tell me what y'all think about this in the comment section below. And I will see you on the next word on the street. Be breezy.